Either way, just thank you for taking the time to come out uh, and join us kind of virtually to learn a little bit more about uh, Ubuntu, which is a group, and the Hill School, which is a group that both these groups have gotten to know each other over the past handful of years. Um, the Hill School being a, for anyone that wouldn't know, a boarding school in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, uh, and Ubuntu being a nonprofit organization that couples both leadership development uh, and soccer, along with education in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, my name is Wyatt Fabian. I'm a history teacher as well as a head boy soccer coach here at the Hill School. Um, with me here, Jordan Samuels, Gavin and Piana, who are two students who came through Ubuntu and are now here with us at Hill. And Sean here is uh, kind of our representative uh, from Ubuntu who's joining us here in the States and kind of making some connections here. Uh, what, I'd, what I'd like to do to actually to start is actually introduce a kind of a distinguished guest we have with us uh, who has ties to a whole lot of different groups that are involved here, but um, uh, Dr. Porterfield, uh, he's longtime Franklin and Marshall president, uh, current CEO of the Aspen Institute. Uh, daughters, for anyone that was just here uh, in our little powwow before the call started, uh, daughters attended the Hill School as well. Um, also was in South Africa with the Franklin and, Men, Franklin and Marshall men's soccer team uh, and got to see Ubuntu and kind of firsthand see what they're all about. So I'd like to kind of start off by giving the floor to him, uh, uh, having him share some words. Uh, thank you, Wyatt. And um, yeah, it was really, really exciting for me when I heard about this initiative um, from uh, uh, Robert Mays, who works with me at the Aspen Institute. Um, and I think this is a, a brilliant thing. Uh, and so it's Gavin Jordan, it's really great to meet the two of you and uh, see you on, uh, on Zoom. Um, and there's like, I can think of four reasons why this is really incredibly important um, and really promising. Uh, and the first is Ubuntu itself is a fantastic organization. I had a chance to see it firsthand in 2017 when I was in South Africa. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the second reason is the kids are amazing. Um, and, you know, it only does great for the world if we can provide a framework that gets more students uh, who are uh, from all parts of the world, but specifically now South Africa, to schools like the Hill. Uh, to be able to develop what's great inside of them and be able to, you know, take things to the next level in their lives and for their communities and families. And we, that's kind of the third thing is that by doing this, we're really, I hope, helping generations, really, really launching kids into opportunity, which then pays off for their families, their communities. Um, uh, I think the Hill School is a very, very special place. Having sent two of my children there, I would say to anybody to consider sending your children there. Um, and because it's a great education, but it's holistic, it's very values-based, um, and students learn, get the academic foundation critical for both college and life after college, but also the framework of community and teamwork um, and support for one another and care for one another that you just don't get um, in, in, some, in many other opportunities to go to school. Um, but the last thing I'd say the other thing about you know, why I think this is so important is, um, is because it's why doing it. And I think that, uh, you know, Wyatt is really a fabulous educator and leader. Um, is the kind of person that is going to make impacts in society through those he touches and through the ideas he spreads. Um, and I think this is something that, you know, as we continue to develop this, and I'm happy to be a donor to it, um, that Wyatt's leadership uh, at Hill with Ubuntu and with these students is really an incredible uh, combination of great assets. And so, um, you know, it can really, really help to um, help everybody, but also help help us uh, in, the, in our work in society to try to extend educational opportunity in a meaningful way. Um, so, you know, uh, go, go Hill, go Ubuntu, go Wyatt, uh, go, go Jordan and Devin, um, or Jordan and Gavin. Um, and uh, if, uh, you know, from a, a sort of a national perspective for a second, as a former college president and as a leader of a, of a pretty large nonprofit organization, it's global. There are, there are nowhere near enough of these kinds of relationships in society, but the way they pay off when we have them is phenomenal. Every student at Hill benefits from this approach to education, um, and every student at the, every student at the schools uh, that Jordan and Gavin will go to will benefit from their being there. Um, and I hope you two are having a good experience so far, and you're loving your sport and loving the learning outside of sport that is, you know, what we're all investing in. 
So let me stop there, but uh, thank you for giving me a chance to say a few words, uh, uh, Wyatt, and um, you're being the head coach of uh, uh, Hill uh, Soccer is, is pretty awesome. Congratulations on achieving that so early in your career. Thank you, Dan, I appreciate it. And, and thank you for uh, you know, taking the time to join us and for that really lovely, lovely opening there. No. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do now is uh, actually segue into kind of our Ubuntu group here. Uh, they're going to share, Sean's going to lead through some conversations, some, uh, and I think he has a presentation to start, uh, and then we have some questions for Gavin and Jordan just to kind of share their experiences. So, Awesome. Well, thank you both to Wyatt and Dr. Porterfield and, and everyone that's uh, come. I'm going to bring you a little closer to my face so that I can control the computer. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate everyone coming. We have a really awesome mix of people here, people that have been to South Africa, volunteered with us, people that are longtime supporters, new supporters, people I've never met before. Um, so it's really awesome to have this group together and, and get to share more about Ubuntu and, and what we do. Um, yeah, so welcome to Ubuntu. And um, yeah, I think a really good way to kind of uh, start off is just to show uh, what our mission is here at Ubuntu. So for the, we've been doing this for 11 years and we have a real focus on mentoring and educating the next generation of great African leaders, society changers, and footballers. And that is these guys. And we really want to see them become the people that make their families, their communities, and the whole society of South Africa healthy and flourishing. And we know that, that guys like this can, can do that. And so that's what we've been doing for the past 11 years. And before I kind of go deeper into what we're doing, I'd love to show you just a quick video that'll give you some context of the environment we're working in, what our, our school, our, everything that we do looks like, um, so that as I talk deeper that you have a, a good picture in your mind about it. The reason I want to be born is because I want to become a football player and I want to be a next, the next leader. Ubuntu started really out of our desire to, to raise up significant leaders in these communities where uh, leadership seems to be a real issue and we wanted to use uh, football as a context uh, to raise up some significant men that would, would transform these communities. So special about Ubuntu, like they, they don't just focus on football, even though as young boys we just want to play football and have fun, like there's something different about them, giving you schooling, helping you over the field, whenever you want to do extra they will be there. They believed in me and they kept me, and I really appreciate that for them. Our heart really is to, is to see men become the people that will lead their families well, who will uh, serve their communities, and then ultimately start to see transformation happen throughout South Africa. And, and so that process is long and it's hard, and it means we have to invest deeply in them over a long period of time to really see their hearts be transformed, their mindsets changed, uh, to give them skills to lead and to grow, and then to help create pathways out of their situations into new and better futures. The thing that I enjoy the most about attending Ubuntu is definitely football. <laughs> but yeah, we get to do other stuff here, like being a leader to the younger ones. So yeah, through Ubuntu, I've, always, I've been able to draw my football talents and become a better person and a better leader for myself and the man that I want to be one day. Want to develop kids holistically. They develop kids mentally, they develop the character and they develop them in football. And that's what attracted me to Ubuntu. They guide kids and they guide youth in the right direction. Being here like really changed my life, you know. I learned how to be responsible also as a young man, you know. Like I'm free when I come here. Like, no, I can't explain that feeling. You know? Like it's an exciting feeling. You know? We've evolved so much in nine years from being just a f little football program and then a football program that was sending kids to a school to eventually having our own residence and then eventually having our own school. It's, it's kind of been a, this constant evolution and it really means we have taken the responsibility of really raising the Ubuntu man that we dream of them being. Ubuntu is kind of like a family because they create a culture where everybody is welcomed and they feel warm and they feel um, the love. Before I was like, I was, I was kind of like a person that 
would just sit down and just let things be, even though I saw they were wrong. But now I'm more confident in stepping up and leading and telling them what to do and showing them the way. Yeah, we would love for people to, to just get to know us, to follow our story, to get involved. Um, everyone has a different part they can play. I mean, that's the essence of Ubuntu, is that we all have a part we can play in, in building a better future. And so we just pray that you would get in, involved, that you would get excited, you would share our story, and that you would find the place that you can specifically help, because uh, I know that there's a place for each of you. Awesome. So that's, um, yeah, kind of a, a summary of who we are um, and, and what we do. Just wanted you to get, get a good picture of it. Um, so first, I just want to talk about the word Ubuntu and what exactly that means. In America and kind of in the West, we have this life philosophy of I think, therefore I am. So my value, my worth uh, comes from, you know, the job I have, the, the things I've been able to buy, the college I went to, all those things. And in Southern Africa, uh, we have this life philosophy of Ubuntu, and that uh, best translates to I am because we are. So my value and worth comes from you having value and worth. So if I live that out, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure Jeremy's life is incredible. And I know that that's going to obviously make his life better. It's going to ultimately make my life better. And then even bigger, it's going to make our, our whole community's life better. So that's a big philosophy behind what we do is really trying to invest in these guys um, and we know that that will have this real after effect. Um, and we're excited to see that as, as we continue to grow. So just to take you through the journey of kind of how Ubuntu works, we uh, start with kids about 11 years old, 12 years old, coming into the academy. We run a trial throughout the city of Cape Town. Last year, we had 650 of our kids or of, of kids throughout Cape Town come to the trial. And then we had to narrow that down to about 10 kids. So um, as our name has grown, it's become much bigger and uh, much more distinguished, which has been exciting. And we've been able to get some really exciting kids that um, yeah, are both great footballers, that uh, are good students, that um, yeah, can handle our environment educationally. And, um, and then kids that want to grow and want to learn and want to become future leaders. So it's been really amazing. And then they come into the academy, which I'll talk through kind of all the different areas of the academy. And then as they, they leave the academy, when they graduate from high school, we then try to help them find different pathways. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about those as well. Um, so the first part of the academy is obviously football. It's, it's who we are. It's um, the reason the kids come to us. It's, uh, yeah, the passion that kind of everyone shares at Ubuntu. And one of my real passions in life is to show people that, uh, that the kids at Ubuntu are very good at football. Um, even my own family still asks like, how's that little soccer camp going? I'm like, it's not a soccer camp. They're like elite footballers, you know, they're really good. Um, and so we actually, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but we, we've won some big tournaments throughout South Africa. Um, and so I have a little highlight video for you to see, um, just how good the kids are. This was in the kind of regional tournament for under 18s, uh, in the Western Cape. And, and we ended up winning that uh, this past year. And so these are some of the, the highlights and the goals from that.
cool. So that's just, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to show off for our boys. And those uh, videos are great. They're what convinced people like Wyatt to, to bring our boys over here and uh, yeah, let them play in the US. So it's it's good for people to, to be able to see that. So the, the second aspect of what we do is our education. So we run a full school from grade seven to 12 um, with a bunch of amazing teachers that, um, yeah, are more than just teachers. They are mentors and um, they really, really care about our students. Um, we're able to offer different languages for the, the players. We're able to um, be very creative in our education, whereas in a normal, if we were sending our kids to a school, uh, we wouldn't be able to. And so the school provides a really unique environment for us to, to tailor the education to the kids. Um, the average class size is usually about you know eight to 10 kids. So it's very small. And we joke that none of the kids can hide, um, that there is a lot of attention on each of them um, from the teachers as they look at the ones who are excelling and the ones who are struggling a bit. They're able to, to really give them um, yeah, the attention that they need, which has been great. And then the uh, third aspect is the house. So we opened a residence in 2015 and uh, we now have about 30 kids that live there. Uh, these are kids that either live too far away uh, from the program or they just live in situations that aren't the best for them. And so we'll bring them into the Ubuntu house during the week so that they can get proper food, um, like all of this uh, macaroni and, and brie meat, um, or yeah, for them to get a proper rest, get hygiene, all of the different things. Um, it's a, we have a, amazing uh, house parents that live there, and they do a great job of making it a family feel and really um, giving a good example of, of what a healthy family is. They have three kids on their own that also live at the house with them. And so um, they do a fantastic job of just showing, um, yeah, what, what a, a healthy family could be and really emulating that for all the boys. Uh, I used to live there for about four years. And um, as you can imagine with 30 teenage boys, it's very smelly, it's very chaotic, um, but it's a really amazing place. Uh, in, in both at soccer and at school, the boys are trying to get something done. And so here at the house, they're just living, they're just having meals, they're just playing video games. So it's a really great place to build relationships with the boys and, and to talk you know, through what they're going through, to um, also just talk about pointless stuff, to watch soccer games and, and have fun together. And then the last part is our uh, mentorship, our character education, what we call most our, our character formation. It kind of rounds out the holistic approach that we have at Ubuntu. Um, we do a bunch of different programs from mental health initiatives to uh, kind of group discussions through our character curriculum. And then we've just started in the past year, a program called Dual Dream. And we basically started to look at the, you know, the likelihood and the statistics around a kid in an academy or just a kid from South Africa that will, will make it pro. And that's every dream of every kid that comes to have been to, he wants to be a professional footballer. But the likelihood of that is small. And even if we monopolized that small percentage, um, it would, yeah, we still might not be able to get every kid in. And, and even if kids do make it in professional football, if they had the best career possible, they only make it to 35. And then what are you doing for the 30 years after that? So we now require to do that every kid has to have a dual dream, not a plan B, but something that they're pursuing just as much as they are pursuing football. So that could be a lawyer, a doctor, a business owner. Um, and we really know that whatever that thing is, that the skills they learn in that process will help them be a better footballer. And the skills they learn on the field in football will help them to be a better lawyer or doctor or business owner. Uh, in program, we have different guest speakers come in. We've had our own alumni come speak. Um, we do a lot of career planning and, and really trying to help the boys map out where they want to be in life. Um, so I have a quick video just to show about that and about uh, that program. Over the last three weeks, as part of our dual dream curriculum, we've been looking at some statistics around professional football, really how many uh, players make it into the professional game, and then we've also been looking at the length of careers. And, and as a result, we, uh, we naturally move then into, well, what about a dual dream um, pursuit of education, other careers, other passions? Um, and so we decided to uh, unpack what does it look like to pursue other things alongside that pursuit of professional football. And then this last week we've been really looking at purpose and identity, um, really looking at 
these boys are the more than just footballers. So we, we looked at some different stories of those that have gone on to pursue things in scholarships, those that have gone on to pro football, those that have gone on to other careers. And we really want to start um, the boys to get inspired by things alongside their football. Cool. So that's just a bit of what we do in Dual Dream. This is kind of showing what I was talking about as far as having a real, um, yeah, a, a life after football. And that can look very different from kids that never make it to pro football, that ones that get injured in the middle of their career, to ones that have a full career, there's still a lot of life left. And, and even for players that have that long career, a lot of their identity can build, be built up into football and into their sports career. And so when that ends, a lot of players struggle with their mental health as, as they go then into a life that, you know, they've had one focus for so long and now that's gone. And what are they going to do? So we really try to help our players uh, prepare for that. And um, these are a few of our players that uh, are in the academy now and what their dual dreams are. So Asim um wants to be a hotel manager. Javario wants to be an accountant. And Luke Hendricks wants to be a vascular surgeon. And we had a, a guest down to do a tour and we asked Luke to come talk to them. And I asked him what his dual dream was. And he said vascular surgeon. And I was shocked because I, I don't know how he knows what that is. Um, but he is very passionate about it. And he, he, I actually asked him and, um, his grandmother was very sick and they were going to have to amputate her arm. And then a vascular surgeon came in to do a consultation and realized that something was blocked in one of her veins and was able to do surgery and, and save her arm. And he was really inspired by that. And so now that's what he wants to do. So it's been really cool that that's, um, yeah, his dream. And, and so now we're looking at ways that we can you know, get him connected to a surgeon and get him to um, get some um, some exposure to that field, which has yeah, been great. So it's a really, really cool program. Um, and yeah, so then back just to the Ubuntu journey after the academy, again, we then help our kids get into different pathways. So kind of with that dual dream, um, there's three different pathways. So the first is to go to education. Um, so whether that's to go to a prep school like these guys, to go to community college or a university, um, either in the States or in South Africa to try to get those opportunities. Um, there's quality employment. So becoming a teacher, becoming a, um, a police officer, a business owner, those kind of things. Um, and then professional football. So we, we have lots of players around the world playing uh, professional football and, and seeing them grow in those careers has been awesome. So just to show some of our impact so far, uh, we've had 18 players come to the U.S. so far on $2.8 million worth of scholarships. 13 players have gone to South African pro, pro clubs. We had our first player go to Europe uh, back in January, February to uh, play in Belarus. And he's doing really, really well. He's one fan man of the match. He's a defender, but somehow he keeps scoring. Um, it's been really incredible to, to watch. And we actually, uh, in South Africa last night, we had uh, two of our players that are on different, or actually three of our players that are on two separate teams play against each other. Um, so that was really cool uh, as they start to meet on the field um, in the, the top professional league in South Africa. And then just in, in the academy, we've uh, the highlights that I showed you earlier from the uh, engine regional champions. So we've won that for the past two years. They didn't have it in 2020. Um, and then we won in 2019 the national tournament and then made it to the finals this past year. Um, we're our current league champions. We just actually started the league this past Saturday uh, for this year. So hopefully we hold on to that title. Um, and then we've had lots of players go on to the, the national team um, from under 17 all the way to the, the senior team. Uh, we had our first Olympian last year, which was really amazing to watch him go to Tokyo. Um, and then we've had uh, players that were in the World Cup qualifier squad. And then on the right is just kind of the, the difference between the normal South African kid or the person and then our kids um, and where we're starting to kind of see the interventions and the initiatives that we run, how they're really producing a different type of kid. Um, when, yeah, our school pass rate is higher, our kind of unemployment rate uh, in our kids is much lower. It's a, a really big problem in South Africa. Um, and then getting our kids qualified for university. We want them to have all the choices, even if they don't decide to go to university. We want them to be able to have the choice to do that. Um, and so we, yeah, have had some great accomplishments over the past 11 years, and two of those accomplishments are sitting here to my left. Um, and so I'm going to bring them up. 
these are some really nice throwback pictures um, of them. They were much cuter then, um, but they still look pretty good. And uh, here's some some real pictures of them at the Hill School. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do a quick interview with them. I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen so you can see their, their smiling faces um, a little bit bigger. And yeah, they are really awesome. And they've been here for a while. I'll let them introduce themselves uh, just so, yeah, they can kind of give more of their story. So I'll let you go first, Jordan. Also, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jordan Samuels. Um, I'm currently a sixth form at the Hill School. Um, I'm the soccer captain. I've been here for about three years. Um, I came from a middle class background in South Africa, um, a family of four, and kind of made my, made my way through the the, the ranks through the soccer ranks growing up um, and stumbled upon the, the opportunity to join Ubuntu. Um, and I was fortunate enough to, to be one of those players that got picked um, and kind of made my, my journey from Ubuntu. Things picked up. I got better as a person, as a player. I grew closer to, to God and that the, the impact that Ubuntu made on my life um, has stuck with me through you know through all through everything that i've been through um and it made me grow as a person and i got i was lucky enough to get the opportunity um from ubuntu and hill um to come over here and i was about 16 at uh, 16 of age um to come here and play soccer and, and pursue my passion as as a footballer as well as um you know i, I strive to one day own my own business too um, and do consulting for other businesses. So through that, I well through the opportunity that Ubuntu provided me, I was able to to do that, and I'm having a great time at Hill at the moment. So yeah, cool. You got it. Uh, hi, <clears throat> hi everyone. Um, I'm Gavin and Piana. Um, I'm currently a fifth former at Hill. Um, so I started at Ubuntu from under twelve. And I got the opportunity to come at Hill when uh, U19, so right before COVID or during the start of it. Um, Ubuntu really uh, helped my life. Um, I've come from a low class family uh, from a community called Steenberg in South Africa. Um, yeah, so I feel like if it wasn't for Ubuntu, we have a lot of uh, distractions outside of soccer and outside of school. I've seen a lot of my friends who have been uh, turned into those distractions, whether it's uh, substance abuse or drug abuse. Uh, I feel like Ubuntu helped me to steer away from that. Um, I wasn't in the house. I was pretty close. So I got to travel with Jordan and a bunch of the other boys. Uh, yeah, so that's me. Hmm. Cool. Um, so can both of you guys tell me how um, you feel like you changed as, as a person as you've kind of grown into a young man? Um, and how, how did Ubuntu help you kind of through that change? Yeah, so personally, I, you know, I always thought that I was like a natural born leader and kind of took challenges as they came. Um, but I mean, my, my relationship with God, especially and, and the, the sort of the, the kind of um, like the the leadership role that I can play on, on my whole community grew ever since I joined Ubuntu. I never thought that, you know, one person, 18, 19 year old could make such a huge impact on a community. Um, and ever since joining Ubuntu and growing through the character uh, curriculum courses and stuff, it, it made me not only be a better person, but also made me impact my community and people around me um, and made me a better person. And I think, you know, that's something that I could, I'm always thankful for. Um, similar to Jordan, uh, I grew up in a very religious family, whether it was waking up early Sunday morning, going to church. Uh, Mr. Tool knows about that. Sometimes I'm, I'm asking him to go to church on Sundays. So, um, yeah, so uh, uh, with that being said, uh, we had uh, devotional Bible studies at, um, at Ubuntu. And I feel like that kind of brought me closer to God by myself, not just with my family. Uh, for me, gaining a bit more understanding of God and of uh, the Christian religion. Um, also, um, uh, that, that's it. 
that's it, yeah. Cool. Um, so at Ubuntu, we have five different values that are kind of the foundation of what we do. And, and we really, from the classroom to the field, to the house, um, even to the Ubuntu van that transport the, transports the kids, uh, we try to really talk about these values to work through them and, and they underpin, underpin everything that we do. So I asked uh, Jordan and Gavin before this if they remembered what the values are. So I'm gonna let one of them try again, see if they still remember. You want to try? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember family. I remember um, positivity is one. Um, growth is one. Okay. And I'm blanking on the last one. Is it excellence? Is that is there one more? Is it five? It's five. Yeah. yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> so it's but, uh, growth, honor, growth, positivity, honor. family. Yeah and excellence yeah um so of those five ubuntu values um which is or which means the most to you and, and why um so personally i i always strive for excellence and i mean ever since i really joined ubuntu it, it kind of it changed my mindset on things on how things on how i do things how i finish tasks and it really made me uh, that value alone, the focus that Ubuntu put on on the that specific value, it made me into a person that wanted excellence in everything that I did, whether it be on the field, whether it be off the field. You know, it was something that I always struck. And um, it just made me a, a much better person. Um, and I, yeah. Uh, mine would probably, I'd have to say, would be honor, especially now more than ever. Uh, because of Ubuntu and because of Phil, I have this opportunity here to um, to study and to obviously play soccer with Coach Wyatt. So it's like such a good opportunity for me and for my family. And hopefully I get to inspire the younger kids that are at Ubuntu right now to maybe look into this opportunity and just honor what we have back here or back home in at Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We have uh, one more of our boys that's coming here to Hill School in August, which we're very excited about. His name is Lucas, and Gavin has done a really good job of just talking to him and sharing his experience. And um, I think Lucas is even more excited about the opportunity because of, uh, yeah, Gavin's kind of mentorship through that. So he's living out his uh, the value he talks about, for sure. Um, okay, so last question. Uh, we talked about our, our dual dream program. So you guys weren't around when we did dual dream, but it's still obviously... Um, we post about it, we talk about it. So I, I'd love to hear what your dual dream is as you guys kind of are soon leaving high school um, and, and why that dual dream is important to you. Yeah, so while we were at Ubuntu, I mean, they still had some sort of focus on something other than football. Hmm. Um, so while we were there, you know, we developed different ideas, we found things that we were good at and something that I really, really enjoyed being a part of and and, and doing was being an entrepreneur and kind of going out of my comfort zone and doing things that I don't usually do and just going against the grain. And that's something that I really want to do and something that I strive to do in the future. I want to be a business owner. I want to have my own business. Um, I have a couple of ideas. I'm actually running a little side business at school at the moment. Um, but that all came from this idea of having something other than football and kind of having both of them at the same time and in, enjoying the qualities of both of them. Um, so I would love to be a business owner. I would love to, to do a lot of traveling regarding business. Um, and, and that's, that's my dual, my dual dream. Um, so, uh, the Hill school has so many classes. So, uh, as I was an incoming sophomore, uh, I decided to take an art an ad class calling, called uh, web development, which uh, was basically a coding class. Uh, and I would basically uh, design websites or create websites. And so, yeah, my dual dream is probably computer science. Uh, I feel like I have a passion in that area. Uh, my uncle is also a computer scientist right now, and he's currently in Germany. So. I can I know a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, so that's why. Cool. Um, I'd love, sorry, a little a B question to the last question. Um, how do you feel like you could use those dual dreams to then go back into your communities to really make a difference? Yeah, so like um, Sean touched on earlier on, we in our communities, there aren't a lot of leaders, there aren't a lot of 
um, job opportunities for people. And in, in my opinion, that's what I want to do. I want to provide job opportunities. I want to provide opportunities for people that come out of, out of high school that are struggling for a job. Um, you know, Gavin and I are both really lucky to be in the situation where we can go to a top, top quality college and graduate with a really good degree and it wouldn't be hard for us to find work. Whereas back home in our communities, it's really, really tough for, you know, our friends, our cousins, our older people that are graduating out of high school, out of college that struggle to find jobs. So what I really want to do is give back by creating businesses, creating opportunities for people back home. I feel like uh, my dual dream could help uh, students at Ubuntu or football players at Ubuntu by um, creating an, a variety of options to look at. Uh, I feel like we don't have, at Ubuntu, we don't have enough of that. Uh, a computer science class, I don't think we have at Ubuntu yet. Uh, that could be because of our financial status right now, not being able to um, afford every everyone a laptop or a computer. So I feel like uh, the more I grow into this uh, major of mine, I'd want to come back and help open this up for Ubuntu and the players over there. Cool, awesome. Guys, thank you very much for sharing. I really appreciate it. Did a great job. Um, okay, I'm gonna round off now as we've uh, talked a lot. Uh, just to kind of end it off, just to talk through kind of where we are at as an organization. Um, so these are kind of the expenses. You can see that we really have a focus on the education of the boys. It's very important to us. And so that's what we spend the most money on. Uh, we have about 75 players that we work with um, in total. And that includes kids that are in the school, the house and kids that are in football. Um, and that's kind of, you can get a bit of the idea of the prices we're spending per age group and per kid and everything. Um, so just wanted to have you a quick look at that. And then, yeah, we would love for you to get involved. We can only do what we do with the support of amazing people like you. And we love doing these kind of events because we get to meet all sorts of interesting people. Um, and so, yeah, if you want to get involved, there's many different ways, as you can see. Um, one is to just make a once-off donation that really helps us and, and really helps us to support our, our staff, to um, get them the resources they need, to get the food for the house, to pay the electric bill, all the different things we need to run the organization. Um, that helps us do. We also have a program called Ubuntu Teammates. So we, we have a couple of teammates on the call um, and that's a, what we call a monthly donor. It's someone who gives anywhere from $5 to $500 a month. And in those, that kind of consistent funding coming in really helps us um, to know, yeah, where we're going to be. And, and we do a really good job, I think, of connecting with our teammates. And uh, we pair you with one of our age groups that have been to. So you get to watch that age group grow up over the years. Um, we send out cool emails every month. We've done, you know, little videos from them, uh, letters from them. Uh, we even made like a Spotify playlist of all their favorite songs. Um, so it's a, yeah, a cool way to kind of get to know the boys and really see the impact of what you're doing. And then we have a, a large kind of a larger uh, donor program called Ubuntu Captains. And that's for people that are able to donate over $10,000 per year. And uh, we have a every other year trip where those people are able to come down and, and visit and both enjoy the beautiful uh, scenery of Cape Town, but then also get to spend time with our players. Uh, we also give them kind of some special behind the scenes updates throughout the year. And um, yeah, that's been a really awesome program to, that we started last year and we're kind of gaining new members. Um, and if that's something you'd be interested in, I'd love to talk about it and answer any questions. Um, and then, yeah, as you can see, there's lots of different ways to donate. Um, you can scan with your code or scan with your phone, the QR code. Um, we're on Venmo, Zelle. You can also mail a check um, and you can find all this info on our website after this as well. Yeah, we really appreciate, again, everyone's time and um, yeah, any support that you're able to provide to Ubuntu goes a really long way. We have an amazing staff, really amazing kids. Um, yeah, that all are really focused on making a difference in the world. And so um, your support goes to, to empower them and give them everything they need um, to keep doing the work we're doing. Um, so yeah, hopefully you've been inspired by these guys. I really love, I live in Safka, but I love coming to the States to do these events. 
and getting to spend time with them and hear their stories and, and see them in their environments um, is really incredible. So yeah, again, thank you to everyone that's coming uh, or that has come. Um, thank you to the tools for helping us organize this. Um, and yeah, <laughs> thank you to uh, Wyatt as well for um, his organization. I'll, I'll pass it back to Wyatt just to kind of end off. Um, but yeah, thank you again to everyone. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> So thank you guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for coming all this way. And you know, this is our first time actually meeting too. So this has been great to actually make a uh, an even greater connection to someone else kind of in the Ubuntu community. Um, again, we only know here at Hill. We really only know Ubuntu like so much. We get to see these these guys that they that come over. They're products of Ubuntu. Uh, we know there's a lot going on behind the scenes over there. Uh, we're excited about kind of growing the relationship in the future. Um, Jordan will be graduating, heading off to Franklin or Marshall where he'll, he'll continue his studies and also compete. Uh, you know, Jeremy's, Jeremy's excited over there. Uh, we'll also compete on the soccer team. Uh, Gavin will have another year. Lucas will come in next year as a fourth former, which for us is a sophomore. Um, and you know, the goal is that uh, Hill in the future will continue to be kind of a second home for a bunch of graduates and uh, this relationship will continue. So yeah, thank you for coming and, you know, learning mostly about Ubuntu, but also hearing how the two groups are connected. Mm -hmm. For sure. And yeah, if anyone ha ever has any questions or anything, feel free uh, to contact me. Or, um, my email is sean, S-H-A-W-N, at UbuntuFootball.com. So easy to remember. Um, but yeah, please, any questions you have, um, anything you ever want to know, any material need, um, yeah, here to talk. Uh, I love talking about Ubuntu. That's why we've gone on so long, but we're within the hour. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll end it off here. And again, thanks everyone for coming. <laughs>